Okay, so everyone, Jacob Abbott, Cognitive Passwords, go ahead. Hello, uh, my name is Jacob Abbott. I'm a graduate student, master's student with Indiana University, and this is a project that I've been working on with my advisor, Professor uh, Gene Camp, and it's titled Cognitive Passwords. And what we were looking at is seeing if we could actually use visual cues to trigger episodic memory to actually help in people recall the passwords so that way they could actually remember the passwords they created and that way they're actually usable for them. We also wanted to see that if we could also use the visual cues if we would cause them to actually create stronger passwords beyond just if we require a normal rule of the lowercase, uppercase, special character, and a digit. And I can't really see them very well on this, so I'm going to actually show the different websites that we have for each of the groups. So this is, oh, sorry, just one second. So this is the basic control group where it looks like an account creation page, and the only requirement that we actually had for this group was that the character account of the password be at least eight characters. And like, they could use any symbols, letters, or no symbols, just lowercase letters or anything like that, that nature. And this we turned the control group. The next group that we had is just where we implemented the rule, where they had we required them to still have the eight characters minimum, but we also required one uppercase, one lowercase, yes. alpha, a digit, and a special character. And this way we actually create a stronger entropy value for that person. Here's where we started doing it a little bit differently. This is just the photo group where we actually showed them four different images, and we gave, it gives them a random symbol that is supposed to be used in the password that they create. And if they don't like the different images, they can just click the new pictures and it'll, it'll, it'll select a new set and a different symbol than we use. In this way, you require them to still follow the rule, but if we're giving them the images to see if it helps them create something stronger. The last group we had is the same as the photo group, except for one difference. This one, after the when they create their password, before they can move on to the next screen, they select one of the images to actually use as a reminder. And that gets stored into our system on our school server. When they finally do come and log in, it's a standard login screen. It just asks for the username and the password. The difference here being is if they were in the reminder group, when they actually put in their username, the reminder picture will actually show up without advancing, having to advance the screen. So what we showed so far with the results that we've looked at is that you can see the entropy by group here, that the control group as a whole didn't have very strong entropy settings. The characteristics that we found there, median was just barely over the minimum that the other group had. Doing analysis on the characters used in the passwords that we received, the control group, only one, less than a third of them actually had passwords that would meet the requirements for the other three groups. The rural group, we actually found that a large majority of them stayed. Speak on. A large majority of the rural group actually stayed very close to the minimum, minimum amount of length requirement. So the vast majority of them had eight characters in length and just barely met. But that can also be said for the control group as well. When we got to the photo group, we actually found that they had the highest values for the entropy from the different characters that they built up and the length of their passwords. And then the right behind it was the reminder group, which was actually slightly less than the world group, 
or sorry, the photo group, where the reminder actually didn't create quite as strong. But the difference is when we look at how many actually recall their password versus forgetting them, uh, the control group actually had successful recall about 77% of the time. The role group was 70%. The photo group, which had the highest entropy values, actually had the lowest successful recall rate at about 47%, which was the worst of any of the groups. The reminder group, however, actually had a 74% recall rate, which is less than the control group, but when you compare the entropy values of the passwords between the control and the reminder group, the reminder group is significantly higher. So, I just drew a small regression tables. Um, the reminder group is the purple, and that one started for, we use it as a prediction model to see what they would, uh, the probability of actually successfully recalling the password. Um, it started at 0.8 and had a negative build where for each bit of entropy it went down by 0.001. The other groups, however, actually increase slightly, but it's only good to a certain extent because practice dictates that when we actually look at it and get the really high entropy value, no one's going to have that high probability of actually remembering just by basing off the model. So, as an example, I only extended it to 50 because at 100 bits of entropy, um, one of the groups had a, it suggested a 90% uh, recall rate, which doesn't fit the rest of our information. And this is just what I could do for a basic linear modeling. Um, one of the things that we're, we found interesting was that um, the when we prompted the users with the photos and didn't give them the reminder, they had the worst rates of actually recalling, but we had, they had the highest of forming strong entry passwords. When we had the reminder, they actually had the best of both comparatively than if the just control group, which had the best reminders, um, or sorry, recall. The so one thing that we're looking at doing for future work is we're I still have to do more analysis on this, and actually, we're also going to be looking at their uh, ASCII character range in the password to see if that might have any effect on the character spacing. And also, um, we're going to try implementing this in a phishing experiment to see if using the reminder section with the images might actually work for a phishing attack and if the results would be worse or better than a normal phishing attack. And does anyone have any questions? Yes. So in the uh, third group where they have to remind the picture. So, so with the pictures, presumably like there's nothing forcing the user to include all of the images in the past or the past. No. I mean I don't know if you looked at the latest like, versions of the past or the past rate. Um, there's actually quite a few. Um, Is that why it's going by the entropy and the entropy went down? The norm, from what I saw in the passwords, in the photo group, some of them actually did use all four images to write a small sentence, basically. Yeah. And actually, two of them, I think, that had the highest uh, entropy values that were actually recalled was from the photo group because they actually wrote down the same sentence. Um, with the reminder group, more of them actually would use one of the images as a focus, but quite a few of them actually use two or three images, the wording actually in the middle of their passwords. And, but you can only select one as a reminder. Yeah. Something else that I saw was that they may select an image of a dog or something, but then they don't actually write dog. Like they may use another acronym as in uh, hound, or they may say something of 
K9. Um, one just wrote D-A-W-G, which is still sounds like dog, but it's not the actual thing. Yes. So like the, with the pictures, is it, a, is it like sort of pictures and set of pictures, or what's that point? Like, like, you know, um, it's a limited set. I'm, I don't remember the exact number. I think it's 44 images that I have for to choose from. Okay, so um, like in that case, do you like have statistics about which of the most common images that you think is there like this? I like don't really. Um, I know just from myself looking at it that a lot of people chose what were in the first two columns. And I think that might just be like the reading preference of looking left to right. But I'm not really sure. I haven't done much more in the experiment to like try switching it. I've only ran one group through, so I might try doing that later. But that yeah, is kind of a, a little bit different than what we were actually looking for. Um, I do know that uh, it's not on this slide, but it's actually something that kind of came up out of it that we weren't expecting. Uh, it actually gives a lot of credit credence to setting a limit on how many times people can guess the passwords. Because when we had the login page, we only allowed them to have uh, four attempts, and then we pushed them, if they still didn't have it, we pushed them onto this uh, final pending survey anyways. And out of all the 250 people that we had doing the login, um, only one person actually was able to get their password correct on the fourth attempt. They either got it correct on the first, second, or third try, or they completely forgot. So the vast majority of people remembered on the first or second, then it dropped down significantly to the third, and then the fourth was one person out of the two people. Any other questions? Okay, <laughs> five chicken. <laughs>